Welcome back to HTC Recharge. We are on day two. Day one was a pretty amazing one. We got to see all the players. All the players got to play once. And we uh, we split the field in half. The half that made it, the half that didn't. If we take a look at the bracket, we can uh, kind of see what's going on here. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm preparing. I'm joined by Nimsh. Uh, how's it going? It's going good, man. We had amazing matches, as you mentioned. Uh, looking at the bracket right now, we can see that Trump actually defeated a life coach. Uh, mm -hmm. A pretty solid win. And um, we picked yesterday, um, we picked Trump as our winner for today. We are rooting for him. Uh, Bunny Muffins winning versus Ecop was also a nice feat. Uh, Bunny Muffins is a qualified player. Even though Ecop yeah. had a better lineup, he still lost. Yeah, Ecop seemed favored in most ways in that match, but. Um... It's it's important how the cards go down as well, so that's that's the unknown factor. And there was this Paladin that actually worked pretty well for Bunny Muffins. Yeah. And uh, following on that, we had Nairia uh, losing to Asahida, a player from Romania actually. We got some more information about him, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk more about it when we actually go to his match. Um, then Dog won versus Purple. And uh, Gara defeated Shao. Gara bringing a Priest, um, a really awkward build. Uh, but we are going to see more of this priest today as well. Uh, Zale winning versus Kolimon. Um, even though Kolimon was a qualified player, he played extremely well. And um, I feel he got a bit unlucky in the, in the last mm -hmm. game. A little bit. Lothar. Lothar was bragging that Strifecrow is an easy target. He won versus Strifecrow three times before. And again, he won versus Strifecrow. That's the fourth time. Fourth time. The last match. Yeah, Nuguri beaten Forsen. That was a really close series as well. So the uh, the eight remaining players will um, will narrow the field down to four here. And then we'll get down to uh, our finalists, and right after that, we'll have our champion. Players are playing for uh, first place gets five thousand to uh, have a similar idea to Gara with his priest from what we saw, but not. You can't really like identify what's going on, really. Yeah, it's um. Well, he is bringing a control priest, but what is that priest exactly, and what he's trying to aim, what he's trying to counter? It's hard to tell. But you know what? Like a lot, of, a lot of people know Dog, but I'm not sure if they know that he's at the moment one of the hottest players in the market. Uh, he is fourth in the world, second in A. Uh, he was uh, in the final of DreamHack Summer, a, a very big Swiss, and he is totally rocking HPL. I think he's uh, on the first place with like 100% win rate. Maybe he dropped one game, uh, but more or less he is the top HPL player at the moment. So yeah. um, doing really good and uh, going versus Asahida, a Romanian player, who he thought was actually Spanish player from Belgium, or was it Belgium? Yeah, there, there were a lot of guesses and stuff. Um... You know, he hasn't really had any breakout performances, so, you know, getting the details on these guys is just uh, basically something we ask them at this point. We really don't have much information going into it. So, yeah, we found out a few things. Romania likes Rogue, likes Deathwing, apparently. That... Yeah, he loves Deathwing, and he's uh, playing Hearthstone for three months. That's uh, three months of Hearthstone, and here he is. A pretty impressive achievement. Yeah, three months is not really a long time. Um, I mean, it is a long time, but to to play at the absolute top level within that time period is fairly unusual. Um, there's a lot to just experience and to learn from experience. You know, Hearthstone's rules are uh, fairly simplified, but you know, you're playing on so many different levels when you're playing at the highest level, when you're playing at the tournament level. You, know, you have to know every single card in your opponent's deck, you have to know the sequence, you have to know um, what he's doing based on what you would have done to really narrow down the options that he may have in his hand. You know, this this list of skills goes goes on and on and on. Um, you know, Hearthstone is often not a game that uh, the best player wins in every single matchup, but um, it is it is a game that has a ridiculously high skill cap. And to come close to that in a three-month period, is pretty ridiculous. So that's that's some uh, some good stuff there. Oh yeah, and he's playing uh, difficult decks as well because he bring he's bringing um, the Maligus Warlock, which is not that um, straightforward. The, the Control Paladin and Midrange Hunter. So um, looking at a player who is at this level, just uh, playing in uh, in this kind of uh, mm -hmm. tournament, I would expect aggro decks only. But he he's is in a Control Warrior. He's not he's not playing Paladin. I think we had a Control Paladin that got knocked out. I think it yeah, was yeah. Uh, um, who 
Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Um, Colomon, I think. Yeah. Colomon, yeah. Yeah, he was the one with Control Paladin. And I think uh, I didn't do that well from what I remember. No, he lost yeah. uh, because not of Not particularly Jack. well. Not particularly well. Well. All right, guys, we're about to get into uh, the game here pretty soon. Um, just want to tell you guys uh, the schedule here. We're going to kick it off with Asahida versus Dog. Then we're going to do uh, Bunny Muffin versus Trump. Then Gara versus Zele. Then Lothar versus Nuguri. After the four matches, we'll basically be in the semifinal stage. We'll have two semifinal matches, and then we'll have our grand final. That's pretty exciting. Um, I was uh, I was sad that uh, Forsen lost yesterday. It's um, we, we discussed it yesterday as well. Like when the winner comes back, we kind of want him and expect him to win again. But uh, only Firebud was able to take two tournaments in a row. Um, yeah, no, no other player did that. Yeah, it may have happened like smaller tournaments, but most of the stuff that uh, people are kind of, uh, you know, seeing on big streams and that kind of stuff, you know, it um, it's hard. It's really hard to take the big ones. Yeah, but we have seen um, more than just like winning tournaments. We've seen uh, a lot of players, like well-known players, uh, go through qualifiers consistently. And uh, really, that's I feel that's like kind of the the show of strength that just being consistent, being able to qualify so many times. I know players like Tice uh, and a few others have qualified through like you know ridiculous qualifiers just to uh, go to the actual like you know tournament stage where people watch you on Twitch and that kind of stuff. And yeah, also I remember Savitz. Like there was a moment where people were asking themselves if Savitz is still into the game, if he's still good. And uh, to show that he actually qualified for the VGVN tournament and then he won it. Mm -hmm. Just to, to show the skill. He went yeah. through all the qualifiers and uh, then won versus all the invited players. Now, uh, we talked about how, um, you know, we kind of were hoping... Like, I, I, I'm also in, in the Trump boat. I mean, I, I gotta be a little biased, right? A little yeah, bit biased? Yeah, sure. You can be biased. I, I can be biased. It's fine. I don't care who wins, but it'd be cool if Trump won, you know? Yeah. And um, now he's going to have to have an opponent. Who, who do you think is going to make it all the way with him? So um, we discussed Asahida versus Dog, and we want to talk about Trump versus Bunny Muffins. Okay. Yes, uh, Bunny Muffins is his opponent. And um, Bunny Muffins is a player who qualified as well. He played mm -hmm. Infinity, and he's working with Tempo Storm. He might not be a full time Harson pro, pro player, but he definitely knows how to play. Uh, but Trump went for life coach, and that's something amazing. Like this, this only shows. Like we discussed uh, the fact that Trump is one of the top players in Hearthstone, and then he faced life coach, who is the uh, top player, arguably. And he, arguably. And he won. Arguably. Yeah. Arguably. He won. Uh, yeah. So it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be by by much Trump, but he's gonna like if if Trump makes it to the final, which is what we're hoping. Uh, my question was like, who do you think is going to make it out of like the the bottom set? Like Gara, Zele, Lothar, Nuguri. Who do you think is like gonna come out of that group? Um, so I think Gara, Zele, and Lothar have um, the potential to to do it. Uh, Nuguri, he had some questionable plays yesterday, so I would mm -hmm. be surprised if he actually goes to the final. Uh, but uh, anything can happen, so you know those players will have equal chances today. Equal chances, you're given a fair chance. At I this thought, point, yeah. I thought Lothar played pretty well in tough situations. Um, and he ended up beating Strife Crew again. Um, and out of that field, I kind of feel like it's going to be Gara or Lothar. I think Zeli was a little bit off his game yesterday. And um, from what I remember, I think Nuguri made a few slip-ups as well in his matches. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, a couple of questionable plays as well. Yeah, so in terms in terms of like perfect plays, just from what I remember, I might be totally wrong. I think I'd be in, in the Gara or Lothar boat myself. So I'd probably just go with Gara. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Gara. Yeah, so, I'm kind of a fan of Gara as well. Uh, but to, to counterpoint, I will vouch for the Polish dude. The worst, but uh, it's still... And with Midrange Hunter vs. Warrior, it seems like Asahida lost the mind games. Maybe he wasn't expecting the Druid as the first deck. That's Perhaps. why... It's Conquest with uh, blind picks, though. So, I mean, you gotta expect 
absolutely anything. Um, yeah, can't do too much, man. I mean, he had the brawl. He got the good RNG off the brawl. That's basically like a best case because if that didn't happen, he would have lost like the next turn, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he basically drew out the options that he could have. The only thing that could have gotten better for him is if Dog just drew significantly worse. That's that's about it. So, yeah, not much fault in losing there. And uh, just got to keep your chin up and uh, just keep on going, man. Yeah, definitely. Actually, like what, now that you're mentioning it, Asahida played uh, fairly well with this deck. Uh, mm -hmm. Just that it was really a bad matchup and Doc had good draws. Uh, but for the next one, uh, is he going with the warrior again, or would you would you change things up? Uh, what type of warlock is Dog playing? Is he also playing the dragon lock? Uh, I, I don't think... recall. Let me check quickly. Yeah. I think it would be based on that. Uh, Warrior gets a good matchup against a typical priest, and Dog is playing something close to a typical priest. Um, so if he gets a decent matchup against the Warlock, it seems like a fair deck to try again. So Dog was playing Handlog yesterday. Okay, well, maybe not then. Okay, well, it's Warrior against uh, Warlock, and if the Warlock is Handlock, well, it's some bad news for Asahita once again. Um, it's not, not a very good matchup, but it is winnable. Now, looking at it, I think uh, the Contra Warrior is actually in the bad spot overall versus Dog because Druid was a bad matchup, Handlock is a bad matchup, and Priest is, is weird. Like, Priest is really difficult versus Warrior, but I've seen mostly Priest win versus Warrior. Really? Just uh, goes into fatigue. Um, well, I've been watching a lot of Amaz playing Priest versus mm. other Warriors. I think if you watch any like pro player play against Warrior, the matchups that are pretty close, they're just going to win most of them. True. Um, I think the case is that the warrior does pretty well. Um, I don't know. Priest is kind of a weird spot. If if you can't push for enough uh, like aggression against the warrior, he's gonna get out those big threats. And I mean, priest is just not running those like huge removal cards anymore. I mean, you can't run like mind control or anything like that anymore. So that's that's like totally gone. And uh, as a result. It's pretty hard to do too well. But there are some uh, some certain cards that can change the matchup. But still, we have Warrior versus Warlock this time. Uh, that's a handlock, as we said, and you need executes. Asahida actually has an execute there for the Giants. Mm -hmm. Brawl is nice as well. So usually there are two strategies uh, to the matchup. Um, one of them is just dismantling handlock and uh, killing all, all the threats and trying to build up um, advantage, deal some damage and maybe finish with a combo. But the second one is being really aggressive and trying to force molten giants, trying to force a big board so that you can brawl it. Yeah, the idea is that there's only so many like huge creatures in the, war in the war Warlock deck. And with the warrior having so much removal, you often can remove all of them. And, uh, well, if you do, it's not that hard to pull out a win, as uh, sometimes the Warlock will have to go to, like, Jaraxxus mode to keep pumping up threats, and that's basically in range for a Warrior to mess you up. I'm looking at the list right now, actually. Um, Dog doesn't run Jaraxxus, he runs Ragnaros. So okay. That might change the matchup a bit. But mostly it's uh, still into the um, into the mid game. Like how the mid game minions will trade. Is Shield Maiden going to survive? Is it going to kill the Belcher? How good Torison will be? At this point, he has to deal with Torison. But you he, don't his only answer is execute or brawl if you really want. Yeah, this is tough. Like you don't want to waste an execute. But you, you can't leave it on board. Oh man, a second execute gun, and there's still two Twilight Drakes somewhere in the deck. Mountain Giant, Moltens, Ragnaros, that um, he might be... Doc, I think Doc showed Mac Ragnaros yesterday, so Asahida, if he studied the, match, the matches, he should know that the Ragnaros is somewhere there in the deck. Yeah, if, we, if it wasn't in Dog's deck, we kind of have been seeing it in most of these Handlock decks. Just so Handlock has that like threatening push for damage that it once had. 
Do you remember, like, Handlock used to use Soul Fires as removal, and because it had the Soul Fires, some ran like a tech to Leroy, and then, like, you had to deal with Handlock threats where you had to be above 14 life the whole game, which yeah. is a lot harder to do than the current state. Yeah, it is. But uh, I, I did play that version with Faceless, because you could face this as a Taunted Giant, you could face as Zero, so yep. it's pretty good. Alright. Boom. It's good. Turn 7. Boom was green. Just play Boom. And pass. Wait, Especially you... because he is playing a Handlock. This is not a Malagos Warlock. I was going for the attack. Maybe he's going for a Hellfire play after all. Mm, if he have fires here... Okay, so I don't think Hellfire is that good this moment, but on the other hand, versus Warrior, you will not get a, the better situation for Hellfire, I believe. Warrior mm -hmm. is not playing that many minions. Well, it also doesn't... Yeah, it lets you Molten Giant as well. You can Hellfire Molten Giant. He'll be down to free. Well, he won't yeah. be able to Hellfire now. Uh, I mean, he won't be able to... Yes. He, he can still play that. Okay. He is at free. Oh, because the, the, owl, the owl had a discount. Yeah. And yeah. the Molten Giant had a discount. Yeah, that was a powerful turn. So, yeah, so he done in trouble again. Double bro, by the way. Um, yeah. Yeah, certainly teched against what people are playing these days, but Dog didn't really bring the popular decks. Uh, and it seems to be a correct decision, as most people who did bring the popular decks have struggled so far in the uh, HTC Recharged. Because it's easy to counter, I mean, it's not that easy to counter the, the Patron, but if you know exactly what you're playing against, you can bring a lineup that's good against it. Um, here, double Brawl, but not really a good target, not really a good board for a Brawl. Well, good enough, it seems. <laughs> well, not a choice there. So he, he needs um, for the Molten Giant to die, and actually... Nope. But failed. Um, well, you can't even really push for damage here. Like, You can't hit it twice either, because that's basically like taking three hits. You can't take 24 damage from one creature. His best chance is second brawl on uh, next turn. Like, this turn he can just play the weapon. And even if he gets Grimash, it will not look good. No. He just has to hope that Dog will overextend into playing three, four minions. The and thing is, he might, because Dog just saw a very weak answer to his one big minion. He might just play another one. Do you really expect the second Brawl? It's not that common. Yeah, it's at the back of your mind, but yeah, you kind of doubt it. Okay, so what what card? Okay, well, dog goes for the heal. <laughs> so we have a, the same situation: molten giant and heal bot. Oh, there we go. Okay, that top deck boys. You don't have to gamble here now. I don't think you actually hit the heal bot. I think you pass because you open up mortal coil. So it's not really like you're getting a decent trade anyway. You, you the dog picks up the ooze, well. though. It's a pretty sneaky ooze. Yeah. Playing weapons right now is so tough with all the anti-weapon removal. Yeah, especially when you rely on them. That's like true. Like Control Warrior does. Okay, all right. Bro, mm -hmm. boys. Yeah, Dog will have his assumptions verified. There was a second Brawl. It certainly seemed like he was playing around it. Yeah, he's nodding. And the crappiest creature survives. To no surprise. But now he knows like almost all removal is out. Double Brawl, double Execute. Um, there are some Shield Slams, but still. Twilight Drake will be really hard to remove. Belcher. He'll not be able to play that Molten Giant this turn, but... Yeah. Oh wow, he actually automatically concedes. I thought if you get like uh, a shield main there you might have something, but it's true, you're just behind so many cards against the Warlock that 
while you can maybe continue on, you know, one turn at a time, eventually it's going to be the situation where the Warlock just has more threats than you can really deal with. So he throws in the towel there, Asahita down zero to dogs, two points. And Asahita is just uh, trying to control Warrior, just not working out. Yeah, that's tough. Um, two bad matchups for him. And before the match, Asahida uh, said to me that he, I, I said him good luck, and he said, yeah, I will need it. That's the only thing I have. Okay. <laughs> so he definitely respects Dog as a player. And looking at those matchups, like he knows that Warrior is the, the weak link in his lineup. Yeah. I feel, though, that Priest is not particularly good against most of that field. I feel like, if anything, Priest is okay against the, the Dragon Lock because Priest is okay at removing like early-ish and mid-game threats and it's okay at keeping its its life high so it doesn't die to like, um, you know, one of those like druidy combos, like the 14-15 life combos, which is usually what you expect from this deck. So it's kind of hard to pin these matchups because they're so infrequent. But it seems like the priest out of the out of the three decks that are left um, has probably its best matchup against the the dragon lock. I would um, I would say the dragon lock can actually do well versus priest. I think if if we look at the the handlock matchup, handlock is a very good matchup versus priest. So and and this deck can be really surprising. Like you can even get an OTK damage um, versus warrior. That's uh, we discussed it, and then you say that warrior is actually better. Um, I, yeah, I, I agree, even though I've seen a lot of priests win versus warrior. Um, as you said, that the pro players they win those matchups, warrior will be better. And midrange hunter versus priest mm. that's a pretty close one. Like, dog is, is kind of teching for anti aggro, so now that now that we're talking about it a little bit more, um. I think the Warlock is actually favored because he has some big minions. Like, anytime you kill a Death Lord and you get a Malagos, I think you just automatically win. Yeah, it's... Um, and he has four attack. Like, it's, it's really difficult for the Priest to remove unless you can actually steal it with Cabal uh, and Shrinkmeister. But overall, yeah. And especially if there is a spell. You get Malagos, like, turn six, and then you just cast those Dark Bomb, Soul Fire, whatever. Yeah. But overall, like this, this deck, like the Malikus Warlock, you know, it, Twilight Drake, Graptor, um, Belchers, uh, pretty, pretty good minions, solid. So Dog will need a, a good Fossil overall. But also, this makes the Control Warrior matchup significantly better, because the Death Lord is such a bad card. True. All right. If, if you kill Death Lord and get it, Sarah. If you get any like reasonably sized minion, and it's so easy to kill Death Lord once it's buffed as a warrior. That's true. Just execute, shield slam, whatever. Even a brawl, yeah. like after the brawl you are getting one minion and, and then another minion from the from the Death Lord. Oh silence. Hmm. So you can deal, you have six damage on board. You might consider Bane of Doom here. Bane of Doom. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Uh, but you, you get the Bane of Doom creature and a random creature from your deck. Some of the creatures are pretty bad at the same time. Like if you get a Twilight Drake, it's a 4-1. If you get like a Silence or a Heal Bot, you lose the Battle Cry effect, which is significant. But you gotta go for it. Yeah, by the way, Bane of Doom is um, really curious in this deck. Like, it's not a standard. Oh, I man. I haven't seen a list. I, I think Mr. Good was actually playing Bane, one Bane of Doom, but I haven't tried it in my list. Two health Twilight Drake plus a random creature. Seems good enough to me. De definitely decent. Well, he still kind of has that option, he just has the coin now, and that coin is pretty valuable, so I'm not sure I like the tap too much, but he made it pretty quickly, so maybe maybe it's the right play. I don't have that much experience playing this deck. Uh, well, he probably tapped because you want to tap as, as much as possible early. Oh man, Oh, this is actually pretty sick. 
but now he spends the Dark Bomb, so it's uh, it's good to have Torisan, but on the other hand, he doesn't have the combo parts. Yeah. But Dog can't remove it yet. Oh, he picks oh, he up the... Like death. He... Oh my god! He got both. A dog is like, look at Dog's face! He's like, oh my god, I have the combo! I will just... I think he's just gonna to try like... to stall. Like, if he gets Emperor Tharson, it's gonna be the biggest surprise of the tournament right now. Yeah. Uh, actually, I checked his list. He doesn't have Tharson in his in his deck. So, with Tharson dead, there's no Tharson, but still. Um, you can play Maligos and Soulfire, something for 9. Which is still a great swing. And if Maligos survives, and if you still have the Dark Bomb, you can Dark Bomb. Mm -hmm. Or you can just Maligos and, and coil something to kill it for like six uh, six damage, and the next turn you have Dark Bomb and so far. This is pretty impressive. All right. Cabal Shadow Priest maybe. Oh, Sylvanas. Sylvanas is a bit more flexible when you have that much uh, damage. Yeah, it's nice. But then with Cabal, he will be able to steal the Twilight Drake. Meister is really warping the game. Alright, so what do we have here? How do we deal with this? Um... Yeah, not many options, so I guess you tap. Well, Corruptor is, is nice. Um, can you go maybe for... I really have no idea what to play here. Like, all these options seem terrible. I think what you can do is actually, you can defend Defender Vargas, the Imp Gang boss, and then just attack face with both minions. Uh, if you feel like you can't deal with Sylvanas at the moment, you might just uh, ignore Sylvanas and go face. Uh, because you do have a lot of burst. You have full fire, so far, uh, Corruptor as well. Okay, well, you kind of put the. Um... That's interesting. Um, Alright. So you can steal the Taunted Imp Gang boss and kill the Drake. But it might seem better to kill the uh, Defender of Argus, because if there's a Hellfire, you'd steal the Drake. Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay. He still has Malagos with two very powerful cards. So Asahida would need a Shadow Flame here. Um... Does he have one, though? Does this deck normally run one? Yeah. We've normally... seen the Hellfires, but I don't, I don't know if we've seen the Shadow Flame yet. Normally you run 1-1, uh, one, one, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if we've seen a Shadow Flame yesterday. So, uh, well, if you do Hellfire, I don't think it's a great Hellfire board. And now Sylvanas is a, a, really a problem. Well, you can kind of deal with the problem with the Hellfire Soul Fire, but you give up a lot. And if you're planning that play, you'd probably want to tap first to see what your options are. Okay, I see. And that, makes, that makes a lot of sense because right now Sylvanas will not steal anything. But there's uh, the Malagos. There's Malagos. There's a really big mortal coil. Fireball draw card, one mana. Oh man, the dog balance. Is the dog is threatening lethal here. With the soul fire for 9 damage. Malaga's attack. And there's no way you expect that. Is there actually any way to survive this? You you might need to Sulfire Sylvanas and then play the Sludge Belcher. Yeah. Well, you can Mortal Quell the 1-1 one, one to see if you have more options this turn. Wow, well, normally there is actually nothing to deal with Maligas in this deck. Like when uh, I, I was watching mirror matches, you can, you have one Iron Migao, uh, you can silence Maligas, but that's it. And you normally yeah. don't silence Maligas against the Priest. 
Oh, it looks like it discarded the Belcher. <laughs> oh my god. So that's it. Like, there's 9 points of damage from the Soulfire. He can still cast it for 9 mana. Yeah. <laughs> Dog wow. takes the game. <laughs> and that is the first sweep of the tournament, if I'm not mistaken. Dog yes. beats up Asahita 3-0. Complete dominance there. If yeah, you Do tell me, like, hey, Nimsh, Doug is going to steal the Malagas combo and win with that, I would not believe it. Yeah, I mean, come on. You had to take Malagas, you had to take spells. What did he end up taking overall? He had the, the Mortal Coil, the Dark Bomb, the Malagas. What was the fourth card that so he got? So that he won with. He oh, yeah. So he got Malagas and three combo pieces. Yeah. Pretty sick. Uh, so nice it's... opening. Nice opening for the HTC Recharge Tournament. Yeah. The opening 3-0. Um, and there wasn't too much Asahira could do. Um, he kind of got some bad matchups, but I mean, he did open with Warrior, which I mean, you have to expect is going to draw some bad matchups. I mean, you just, you just look, uh, look at how they pair up and Control Warrior is not really a good fit here. Um, so that, that tanked some games. And uh, he didn't really make it work in that last one either. So Dog advances to the semifinal. Um, he will be joined by either Bunny Muffins or Trump, which is going to be our next match. And later today, uh, we will go and fill the second semifinal spots. And eventually, at the end of the day, we will have our HTC Recharged Champion. Oh man, I'm excited. We'll see who is going to be the next champion. Um, yeah. Asahida will not be one, we know that, but I think he played really well. A player from Romania, played Harson for three months, got to the yeah. top eight, played versus Dog. All right, well, uh, congratulations to Dog for making it through the next stage of the tournament. Uh, we will see uh, who's going to be the next player to make it to this stage as well uh, when we come back. We'll be back shortly. Just a few.